Before you land, the flight crew would have made some announcements about information required and customs declarations. That's typical for any flight landing in any country. But specifically, you will need to have completed an e-travel document. If you haven't completed the e-travel document, there's a stop-off point as you're walking through the airport where you can complete it as a last-minute exercise. However, I wouldn't advise arriving in the country without the e-travel completed. In most cases, your airline will not allow you to board the plane until you have completed it. If you're unsure how to do that, please watch my video on arrival. Here's some tourists trying to complete their e-travel arrival documentation because they have neglected to complete it prior to leaving. Once you have your e-travel document, if you've either completed it there and then, or you have it on you, you can proceed forward to the immigration counters. Whilst walking through the airport, you'll cover a health check post like the one seen on the video at the moment. On the left-hand side, cameras will identify if you have a fever and you will be pulled aside for a check. Passing through that, you will see you're arriving at the immigration check-in counters. There is no video allowed at the immigration check-in counter, so I will have to turn it off once I start joining the queue. But suffice to say, there'll be someone standing there that will direct you to a line. Usually, foreign passport holders will go one way, Filipino passport holders will go another way. I'm joining the foreign passport holder queue at the moment. You'll simply line up in the queue and you'll be processed accordingly. After ensuring you meet entry requirements, you will pass through immigration and on the other side, you will see an escalator which will take you through or down to the baggage carousel area where you'll collect your bags. There are a number of baggage belts or carousels and they will be associated to various flights. To find the baggage carousel applicable to your flight, look for the video monitor in the terminal and identify your flight number and associated baggage carousel. Once you've done that, proceed to the carousel applicable to your flight. At this stage, you'll be able to see the customs clearing area that you will later pass through with your bags. Depending on how many bags you have or the weight of your bag, you may like to grab a trolley. Trolleys are free of charge in the airport. Don't be a carousel hog either and sit so close to the carousel that other people can't see their bags coming. Once your bag appears, collect your bag, put it on the trolley and make your way to the customs area or pathways. There are two pathways, one marked nothing to declare and another marked items to declare. If you have nothing to declare, proceed through the nothing to declare pathway. Otherwise, proceed to an area where you have items to declare and have a conversation with the customs officer discussing those items. Be aware, customs officers often select people randomly for inspection. So if you're chosen for inspection, don't have any fears. You have nothing to worry about if you've done the right thing. You're effectively about to exit the controlled area and enter the public area of the arrivals hall of the airport. Directly in front of you, there's a useful signboard which indicates various items that may be of interest to you, such as ATMs, toilets, connecting flights, domestic flights, uh, transport, that type of thing. Having determined the direction you wish to take on exit, you now proceed to the exit that's applicable. That's either left or right. I'm going to choose the left side because I'm looking to find an exchange booth where I can exchange my home currency for local currency. You can also take money directly out of an ATM. But I had my home country currency on me and I wished to change it to local Philippine pesos so I spend a minute or so just shopping around for the best exchange rate at the different exchange booths. Having spent a few minutes doing this, I then line up at the appropriate booth 
and change my currency. I found this particular currency booth to be the best offer of the day. Make things easier, I usually take a photo of the currency exchange rate on offer because once you have a look at a few of these numbers, you start to forget which ones were where. So I can then stand aside and compare all the different rates and find the appropriate booth. Now there mightn't be much between them, so don't lose too much sleep over choosing one booth over another. But if you're changing large amounts of money, it really does add up. Having changed money, I now proceed to the exit gate. And I choose exit gate number four because it is conveniently located directly across from the taxi rank. As you exit, you may also be requiring a SIM card. SIM card booths are available outside the airport and in some cases, depending on what terminal you're at, you may find them available inside the terminal. If you do require a SIM card, simply walk up to the booth, purchase the SIM card plan you're interested in. They will load the SIM card into your phone and away you go. If you don't require a SIM card, simply proceed forward, cross the road, and on the right-hand side, directly in front of you, you will see the taxi queue lined up. That's the yellow taxis in front of us. On approaching the taxi queue area, there is a booth. Sometimes it is manned, sometimes it is not manned. If it's not manned, there'll be someone standing there allocating taxis. They will take your details and they will allocate you to a taxi. In this case, this guy sitting down here asks me for my details and then allocates me a taxi. The unmanned booth is directly in front of me. The taxi driver takes my luggage and loads it into the boot for me. It doesn't always happen, but this guy was pretty helpful. Prior to getting into the taxi, make sure your driver knows where your hotel is. He can always ask someone there before he leaves. The other thing that they often do is use GPS, and you'll see this guy using a GPS once we get into the taxi. I found him very helpful, and he took me to the hotel with no problems at all using his GPS system. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and share as it does help others. And thanks for watching. And until next time, safe travel in the Philippines. Have a great day.